Welcome to Southside Baptist Church this evening. We sure are glad you're here. Let's all stand. We're going to get started off with a song. Page 601, Leaning on the Everlasting Arm. Page 601 in your hymn book. Let's sing it out on that first verse. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Southside Baptist Church this evening. We are glad that you're uh, being here and a part of our services tonight. And we had a good, great service this morning. I want to praise the Lord for it. The message out of Hebrews was fantastic. And uh, really excited about what the Lord has in store tonight. Well, this evening we're going to have actually ask Brother Paul Brown to come open us up in a word of prayer tonight and uh, ask the Lord's hand upon our service that the Lord would speak to us and that uh, we would uh, sing or we'll have a couple more songs we'll be able to sing out and some testimony time just to give praise to our God. And so I want to do that with our whole heart as well. But before that, Brother Paul, would you open us in a word of prayer? Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we just thank you for this night. We just pray that you'll just meet with us, Lord, and just uh, touch our hearts and we give you thanks and praise in your name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. At this time, Brother Josh will lead the choir in a song entitled, My Savior First of All.
Amen. Let's all stand. We're going to sing a song entitled, When We All Get to Heaven, page 429 in your hymn book. Page 429, sing the wondrous love. Sing it out. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Thank you. you may be seated. I'm just going to have a quick moment of uh, testimony time tonight. If the Lord has uh, blessed you or maybe there's something in your life you just shared the praises of God about, I uh, want to give you an opportunity to do that. I want to just uh, praise the Lord for the good singles retreat that we were able to go on this last week and uh, what a blessing it was to hear the uh, ladies and gentlemen singing this morning and then also uh, just sharing about what God has done, and uh, it's it's an exciting thing to be able to have uh, a ministry to single adults and to see. I think there's probably 25 to 30 that that went on the uh, event just to see their heart as they were engaged in the sessions and really desiring to grow. And I told them uh, how proud I was and thankful to see young people that really. Uh, just have a desire to, to seek the Lord and to grow, and so we praise God for that. But just want to open up tonight and give opportunity to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So who has uh, just a word of testimony? All right, several hands here, and, and uh, we'll start right here. Brother Josh in the back, I saw a couple of hands as well. Miss Bay. Well, I thank the Lord, first of all, for saving me and keeping me. I really enjoyed the message this morning, and it's nothing like being here, but I'm thankful for live stream. And I'm thankful for a church that we have that relig religious freedom and that you just don't realize how wonderful that is when you think about these could be taken away from us in just a snap of a finger. And we are really pressing at that mark that we could lose it all if we're not yeah. careful. Amen. In the back, Brother Jimmy. Yeah, as some of you know, I was in the hospital with a mini stroke, but I have no symptoms or nothing now except a little muscle ache. But Saturday when I was getting ready for the ballet to pick me up. I got talking to this gentleman and I did I wanted to give him the word of God, but I didn't have time. So I said, can I have your number, please? I called him today and he led him to the Lord. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, Jimmy. Praise what the Lord. a blessing. I'd like to praise God for uh, 
just revealing himself to me uh, and saving me, just uh, being true and, and always constant. And um, uh, not too long ago, I uh, had to take a test for a CDL learner's permit, and I'm not too good with tests and stuff like that, and uh, especially when I don't have a teacher having to learn it on my own, and I was able to pass that test, thanks to the Lord. And actually wasn't feeling too good, had a little uh, throat issue going on from some work I was doing at work, welding with aluminum, and that kind of had my head in the cloud, if you will, uh, just sinus issues kind of really messing me up. But I just praise God for just seeing me through that. And a uh, few, uh, I think it was maybe more Memorial Weekend, I think maybe lightning maybe hit my house because something blew a hole in four different spots in my roof. But luckily, praise the Lord, it was on the outside part of the roof. And what I mean by outside, on the outer side of the block wall. So when it rained, it didn't rain in the house. It rained like into the soffits. So uh, the Lord spared me on that. And... Um, it also affected a little bit of wire uh, up in the attic, and a week or two after that, a uh, family was cleaning out the garage, and they were throwing out a whole spool of uh, Romex wire, and I'm sure you understand how expensive that stuff is. And then also, uh, just this, I think Thursday, I was leaving work, it was the end of the day, and at my job, everybody pretty much, they leave fast. and. Um, I work with a bunch of mechanics, but I'm not a mechanic. And I went out into my truck and it was dead. <laughs> so the battery was dead, but uh, I was able to catch my boss because they usually leave a few minutes later. And so I got a jumper uh, box and the Lord was able. And I, I just praise God that I had the resources from him to be able to go to the store and be able to buy a new battery. And so everything's good with that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's great. Somebody else. All right. Brother Joe in the back. Or Miss Twyla, you go ahead, and then we'll get Brother Jim. Okay, I just wanted to praise the Lord. Um, he's so good to me. I've had a few health trials this year, and they seem to just come one right after the other, but I always can depend on the Lord, and I want to thank everybody for their prayers because I could feel them all, and i just so thankful for live stream because I would have missed so much church. And when you start missing church, and you don't have a source to go to, to see it, it can be really bad, you know? And I'm just thankful that I was able to see the messages out Sunday, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And I'm so thankful for that. Amen. Brother Jim. I just wanna, oh, sorry. I just wanna thank the Lord just for um, his goodness to me in my life and just for his blessings. Um, I wasn't, I, I'm just thankful for having another child um, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to have any children, and we prayed for a while, and, you know, God gave us a double blessing and gave us two, and, you know, I know they're both from him, so I'm just so thankful for that, and um, later in the pregnancy, like, the the whole eighth month was just a struggle with health for Faye and the baby, but, you know, God was faithful, and the baby came out healthy, and, um, you know, God's just so good. Amen. So. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. What a blessing. Anybody else? All right, Brad, right down here. I just wanted to say the singles retreat was a real big blessing. Um, I would say that any singles that didn't go should go, but I think every single available plus some came. Uh, but I was not having the best attitude about it because I was having some health problems and I took the COVID shot and I had some side effects from that so at the beginning of the week I wasn't really looking forward to it because I was just being negative in my head and um, kind of living in fear that I'm just gonna feel bad and I'm gonna be there and despite pastor's message you know I, I had to re think back to that message to encourage me about living by faith and when I turned my attitude around um, I realized that God had a lot to speak to me about and it was just it was great especially um, the message about Gilgal and how we need to circumcise the flesh so that we can move forward and um, maybe that's a message pastor could preach sometime because that was a very powerful message yeah. but yes it was a big blessing and I I encourage anyone that doesn't go to any special events for your particular uh, groups or the gatherings that we have as a church go to them even if you 
may not feel up to it, the Lord will bless you. And I think Satan definitely tries to discourage you. The times that you least want to go to church are the times that you most need it and most get the blessings I found in my life. So I just want to encourage you that way. Amen. That's great. Anyone else? All right. Let's take a song book and turn to song number 113. 113. Let's stand. Brother Josh, you lead us in our next song. 113, Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let's sing it out. Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in. my tears forever flow could my these for sin could not atone now I save and now alone in my hand no Christ I bring simply to thy cross I cling while I draw time brother josh will sing the special for us this evening he's going to sing a song and then uh prepare your hearts and your minds as pastor comes to preach the word In God's heart there's a place that I was made to fill. I find amazing grace when I'm found within His will. And He's reserved a sacred place where we can spend the day. And he's waiting there for me, inviting me to stay. And every day I'm amazed that God would spend the day with me. I'm overwhelmed by his ways that he could feel such love for me to him i'm worth saving and my heart is craving to know him in his righteousness and understand his ways every day in every way, I'm amazed. In my heart, there's a place that only God can fill. He covers my disgrace with the blood that Jesus spilled and he invites me to a place where we can spend the day and he's waiting there for me inviting me to stay and every day I'm amazed that God would
would spend the day with me I'm overwhelmed by his ways That he could feel such love for me To him I'm worth saving And my heart is craving To know him in his righteousness and understand his ways every day in every way i'm amazed i'm overwhelmed by his grace that he could feel such love for me to him I'm worth saving And my heart is craving To know him in his righteousness And understand his ways Every day, in every way I'm amazed Every day In every way I'm amazed Thank you Josh and Sarah Tori said, when reading the Psalms, never lose your O when you describe God. Often you'd read the Psalms and it would be, O Lord, our Lord. And he said, never lose your O when thinking about the Lord. If you have your Bible, turn to the book of Zechariah tonight. Zechariah. Chapter 1, Zechariah chapter 1. I want to encourage you uh, to be praying for our church. Uh, Southside's had a busy summer and... Um, I was driving home from the couple's retreat, and I'm telling you, I was so tired, and uh, I had to do some work, and I told Amy, I said, if I could just lay down for like five minutes. Have you ever said that? And the five minutes was like, boom, I was out. I mean, I, I laid down for probably about an hour, but I mean, I, it was a hard hour sleep. But it's been a, it's been a uh, long, um, fast summer, if you know what I mean when I say that. It's been full of ministry, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's just been an exciting summer. Uh, see people saved in the camps and the VBSs and all that's going on, the youth retreat and the singles retreat, and so uh, we just praise the Lord for what he's done, and kind of, I guess this weekend is where summer kind of ends for a lot of people, and um, uh, we're rolling into the school year, and uh Maybe parents are saying yay about that, but I want you to be praying for Southside. We're, we're starting off Tuesday, uh, Southside Baptist Academy will kick off and have its first day, and so we're excited about that and have uh, students uh, enrolled and uh, looking forward uh, to what God will do. And I will tell you, on that end, it's been a whirlwind, uh, just different hoops jumping through and um, getting registered as a school and uh, fire marshals and health inspectors and meeting all of the standards. It's been, that, that's been kind of added to some of the summer progress. And so um, we just praise the Lord for that. But hope that you'll keep that in prayer and keep that in mind and just thankful for uh, another opportunity to minister. Zechariah chapter 1, if you'll stand with me, we're going to read a lot of scripture tonight. And uh, just want to emphasize a couple of things here. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible says, Then lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. 
And I said unto the angel that talketh with me, What be these? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, What cometh these to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head, but these are come to fray them. Uh, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horns over the land of Judah, to scatter it. Chapter 2, verse 1. And I lifted up mine eyes again, and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then said I, Whither goest thou? And he said unto me, To measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof. And what is the length thereof? And behold, the angel that talked with me went forth, and another angel went, went out to meet him, and said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, saith the Lord, will be, found, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heavens, saith the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion, and dwell us with the daughters of Babylon. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory which he sent me into the, unto the nations which spoiled you, for he that touched you toucheth the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake mine hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to the servants, and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord, and many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. And the Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion in the holy land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Father, we want to thank you for the service tonight and for the understanding that you meet with your people and what a blessing it is to be here. We praise you for the singing, for the special music, for the testimonies that have declared the work of God even in our day and in our generation. We praise you for that and we ask Lord tonight that you would bring our minds and our hearts to a just a a place where we'll be silent and still before the Lord, that you might speak to us and help us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, may be seated. I want to preach a message with this thought, and I'm not uh, too big on titles, but I, I, I want to give you this thought tonight, scatterings, cursings, and restoration. Scatterings, cursings, and restorations. I have a brother who is eight years older than myself, and um, he was the eldest, many times in charge, and uh, often lent his unusual wisdom to my life. I remember one time I had this, I'll call it a toy, it was kind of like a javelin, and uh, it, it had like a rubber nose, and it had like some uh, plastic, like an, almost like an airplane, like blades that came out, and it had it at the beginning and at the end, and, and we could launch that thing, and it would sail. I mean, it was just pretty pretty neat little thing, and um, I remember that I had launched it, and it had gone up, and it had landed on the roof of our house, and our house had a pitch, and then it had a a porch, and that porch wasn't a big porch. Our house wasn't a big house, but that was probably, I don't know, 10 to 12 feet off the ground, and it maybe sloped down, maybe maybe, uh, around 10 feet or so was the slope of that porch, and so my brother uh, had a ladder, and we climbed up, and then he he launched me up there, so the ladder was uh, not a 
full ladder. It was probably eight foot, and so we climbed up that, and then he kind of put me up on the roof. And so I got the thing, and I threw it off, and I went back, and when I went back, my brother took the ladder and put it away. And I looked at my brother, whose name is Kevin, um, and I said, uh, where's the ladder? He says, oh, you don't need the ladder. I'm like, yeah, I do. And I'm probably, I don't know, maybe 10 or 11. He's like, you don't need the ladder? Jump. I'm like, I, 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 I need the ladder. He's, no, you don't need the ladder. It's not that far. Just jump. Just get on the sides, put your feet over, and you can jump. It's not that big of a deal. And my brother was one that was always pushing the envelope and always pushing us and getting us into trouble. And he was the failure of my life. I'll just confess it right now. <clears throat> So anyway, I, I get to the edge of this, and I, I mean, we're, we've got this conversation. I'm like, go get the ladder. He's like, no, just jump. It's not that far. And he's like, well, if you want to get off the roof, I'm telling you, your only way off the roof is jump. And of course, you all know this conversation. My parents are not home, so guess who's in charge? So no ladder is coming. I mean, that, that was the case. And so, so I finally got to the edge, and I, 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 he talked me into it, and so I jumped. And when I jumped, I mean, he's trying to tell me how I need to jump and land and roll, and you'll never get hurt, and blah, blah, blah. And I don't know what he had watched to get that, that idea. But I jumped, and when I jumped, I'm telling you, I busted my lip, tore it up, and uh, I, I, did, I didn't really break anything or hurt anything, but I mean, I, I hit the ground pretty hard, and, and uh, my lips all bleeding, and I didn't need stitches, but when my dad came home, uh, I remember telling him what had happened and how sore I was and what had happened to my lip, and my dad did not take it as well as my brother thought, you know? He was like, well, what did you tell him to do? Well, I just told him to jump. It would be okay. And my dad goes out there, and he's like, you did what? And then uh, he got on to my brother, and then he looked at me, and he says, you did what? And I said, well, he told me to do it. It was kind of like the Adam and Eve story, you know? Arr! You know, he told me, and I did it, and I listened. And, and, and I remember my dad saying this phrase, you jumped off a roof. What did you expect would happen? Sometimes we live a certain way and we expect a different outcome. And we stand before God with broken bones and injury. And I think God says, what did you expect to happen? When you go contrary to God's word, what do you expect to happen? I want you to notice this passage because here, if you'll be reminded as we go through this series on Zechariah, Zechariah is a young prophet. His contemporary is Haggai. We've already gone through the book of Haggai. You remember that Haggai is literally the book of Haggai is going to fit in chapter one uh, in between verse six and verse seven. And so we've come back to this chapter and now we're dealing, uh, remember Zechariah is in two sections, one through eight, and then in chapter nine, we're going to pick up with a second section or a division, if we can use that word. When we come to this first section of Zechariah, we're reminded of this from last week, just kind of the intro, that we're going to deal with eight visions, eight visions that are given in one night. Last week, we dealt with the first vision that is found in verse 7 through 16, and we're reminded of this teaching of the Lord. Now, remember, remember who we're dealing with. Let's just be reminded of this. Remember that we're dealing with 43,000 Jews that have returned from Babylon's captivity back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. And remember what has happened. Back in Ezra, they built the foundation. They've had some trouble. They've had some difficulties. And, and, and for 16 years, the temple has not been worked on. And, and, and as goes the temple, so goes the revival. There's not been anything that's happened in 60 years. They laid a foundation. They got some trial. And so they took their attention off of the house of God, they took the priority from the house of God and placed it on themselves. And Haggai and Zechariah are two contemporary prophets who are coming back to preach the word of God, to challenge them to, to rise up and build and to go forward for the cause of Christ. But let's remember something. Let's remember the state in which Jerusalem is in. It sits in rubble. 
Uh, Nehemiah will come back years later and will rebuild the wall. But the walls are a mess. There's nothing in Jerusalem that is, uh, uh, that, that, that is standing. Everything has been destroyed and crushed by the enemies of God's people. And, and, and Jerusalem has been destroyed and the temple knocked down. And here is only 43,000 came back to return. And now they are in need of revival themselves. And so here are these visions that are given to Zechariah, this young prophet, to go and declare to the people so that they may rise up and build. Now, last week, we, we talked about the man in the myrtle tree, and we're reminded of just two principles. Number one, God knows where you're at. And all we can say, God knows where we're at. Number two, God cares about the situation that you're in. And that's the vision that he gives them. But notice here, um, we have kind of three things that we want to look at. Number one, I want you to notice in verse 18 that there are four horns that are mentioned. And then I lifted up mine eyes and I saw and behold four horns. And the angel in verse 19 says, what are these? Notice the answer in verse 19. And he answered me, these are the horns, the last part of 19, which have scattered... Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. So these four horns are the horns that have scattered Jerusalem, or Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. When we think of horns in scripture, horns are always symbolic of power or strength. Uh, you'll be reminded that on the altar there were horns that were placed upon the altar. But these horns are not horns of the Lord. They are horns of Gentile nations that have come in with power and strength and scatter them. I believe that the four horns that we're talking about would be the nations that would be also inclusive with Daniel. They're going to be Babylon, Persia, Greece, and the Romans that have come in to literally scatter Israel and Judah and Jerusalem. You'll be reminded that the northern tribes were taken and then the southern tribes were taken and they were carried off into captivity and they were scattered. Now, why were they scattered? Why were they, why were they pushed out? They were pushed out because of disobedience. And then we notice in verse 20 or verse 20, and the Lord showed four carpenters. Um, some would maybe refer to these as smiths. And notice what they do to the horns. The Bible says in verse 21 that these are the, uh, the men that are going to, verse 21, the last part, they're going to fray them to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lift up the horns over the land of Judah to scatter it. So, so catch, catch, catch what he's teaching. Four horns. What are these horns about? Well, these are the horns that came in. Can you think of a bull just running in? And I mean, he's, he's chasing and, and, and trying to peg and hit and kick anybody that stands in his way. And literally, here's the horns, uh, uh, these four horns that have come to uh, Judah, Jerusalem, and Israel, and they have scattered God's people here and there and everywhere. They've taken them to captivity. They've carried them off into different lands. And then he says, well, I want to show you these four carpenters. Well, who are they? Well, they're the guys that are coming in and they're dismantling the horns. Is everybody getting the picture here? Well, why are they dismantling the horns? Because these are the horns that came up against Jerusalem and God's people. Well, Brother Nance, that doesn't make any sense. God sends in horns to scatter the people. Then he sends in four carpenters to get rid of the horns. Well, let's look at a principle. Take your Bible and turn with me if you would over to 2 Chronicles chapter. Before you do that, before you do that. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 1 and 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Chronicles. Chronicles chapter 7. Verse 14, 
If you're there, say amen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will, next three words, what are they? Heal their land. This this is what I'll do. Now mine eyes shall, this is the Lord speaking, my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. That's speaking about Jerusalem and the temple there. Now drop down, if you would, he's, going to, he's speaking to Solomon who was dedicating the, the house and he's about to fill that or he's going to fill the house and consume it with his glory and with his power and drop down to verse 19 and notice what it says. But if ye turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you, And shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Verse 20. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them. And this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight. And will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house, the temple, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it, so that he shall say, why hath the Lord done this, done thus unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, hath he brought all this evil upon them. Now stop just for a second. Did everybody catch what he just said? He said this. If you're going to forsake God, if you're going to turn from the Lord, I don't care how much money we've raised to build this temple, I will tell you what I'll do. I'll send in the horns. Everybody get in the picture? I, 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 I will, if you forsake me and if you scatter from me, if you, if you turn from me, the Bible says in this passage here, verse 19, if you forsake my statutes, if you, but if you turn away, forsake my statutes and my commandments, and you serve other gods, notice verse 20, what he says. He says, I will pluck them up by the roots. In other words, I'm going to pull you out of this land. And by the way, I'll not only pull you out of this land, but the, the, the temple, I'll destroy it, and it'll literally become a, a byword. It'll become a, a something that is, that is for, forsaken. I, it'll be cast out of my sight. Notice that in verse 20. And it'll be a proverb and a byword among all nations, and, and they'll be astonished at the glory of the house And how this house of beauty and glory is now nothing more than rubble. So we we understand something that in Zechariah, when when he shows them, what are these four things? Where those are the horns that scattered Israel. Why would they scatter Israel? Because they forsook my word. Is everybody with me on this? This is the consequence. All right. Well, what about these carpenters? Why are you going to destroy them? All right. Take your Bible. I want you to hold your place in 2 Chronicles and turn with me to Genesis. Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that, what? Curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So here are the four horns. God sends in the four horns. And then you're like, well, why, 
it, it's amazing to me how God uses the wicked. Even in the sovereignty of God, he uses wicked men to accomplish his will. And then he sends in these carpenters. And you say, well, what are the carpenters for? Well, they're going to whittle or fray is the word. They're literally going to make these horns have no power. And he'll use literally the Gentiles to destroy themselves. The Babylons and the, were destroyed by the Persians and the Persians by the Greeks. And, and, and you literally see this domino effect and, and, and you say, well, why, why were they destroyed? Because God continues to keep his word. You, you cursed Israel. They, they were God's people. So go back, if you would, and, and look what, what we find here in Zechariah. Go back to Zechariah one more time and notice something else. Zechariah chapter 2. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the depth and teaching of chapter 2, <clears throat> but notice what we have in chapter 2 and verse 1. We have a measuring line, uh, and the question is asked, where goest thou? And he said, to measure Jerusalem. So he's going to measure Jerusalem. There's going to be uh, a rebuilding of Jerusalem, and notice what you find in verse 4. You find the Jerusalem is built, and this time in verse 4, is inhabited as a town without walls for the multitude of men and cattle therein. Now, stop just for a second. You never built a city without walls. Just didn't happen. I mean, in the day that they lived in, uh, walls were your security. But here's what he's telling them. Nope, nope, Jerusalem's not going to need walls because I am going to bless this place with an abundance of cattle, with an abundance uh, of, of uh, men. And the, without the walls, first of all, signifies the great peace that God was going to put upon the nation of Israel. Secondly, notice in verse 5 what he says. For I, saith, for I, saith the Lord, will be unto her a, notice this, this phrase here, a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. So here, here's what he's challenging. He's saying, listen, I want you to know something. I want you to know what I'm going to do with Jerusalem. I, I'm going to build this city. It's not going to need walls. I'm going to be a wall of fire around it. I'm going to protect the city. And, and not only am I going to protect the city without, I'm going to put my presence within. By the way, that's a city you want to live in, where the walls are, the protection are God, and inside is the the very presence of God. And, and then he, he challenged with this invitation. He says, ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. I have, watch this phrase here, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds. You remember the horns that sent them out? And he says, now he says, deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughters of Babylon, and verse 8, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory which he sent me unto the nations, which spoiled you, for he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake mine hand upon them, and they, speaking of the carpenters, shall be spoiled to their servants, and ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Notice verse 10. What's the first word of verse 10? Say it one more time. What's the first word of verse 10? Sing. And what's the next word? Rejoice. For lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. Now, now stop just for a second. I want you to catch something. Here's the nation of Israel. They forsook the Lord. The four horns come in and scatter them. Didn't we see those that cursed the people of God and they were literally the four horns. And God comes in and he says, you know what I'm going to do to them? I'm going to fray them. I'm going to tear them apart. And then we see Israel who was totally broken and if we can say scattered. And God comes in chapter 2 and says, hey, I've got a plan for you. I've got something great for you. 
I, I, I've, I've, got a, I've, got, I've got a design for you. I am going to reestablish Jerusalem, and I'm going to build this place, and I'm going to, let me use a word, I'm going to restore it. I'm going to put my glory upon it, and it's going to be a place of singing. It's going to be a place of rejoicing. It's going to be a place where God's people are going to find rest, and it's going to be a place of celebration. Notice, notice what he says in verse 10, the last line, I will dwell in the midst of these, saith the Lord. Notice verse 12, and the Lord shall inherit Judah his portion in the holy land and shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent O all flesh before the Lord, for he is raised up out of the habitation. So here is the Lord over a broad plan, scattering, cursing, restoration. Well, how, how does that work? How, how does that happen? Does God get up one day and just roll dice and say, well, hmm, I think today I'm going to curse him. No, let me see. See what I'm going to do today. Oh, it's not going to be good for you today. No, I, yeah, you're going to have a bad day today because I just rolled the dice and, and you got a bad number. Well, let's see what, let's see what next year is going to be like for you. Oh, I hope it turns out good for you. Let's see. Uh, oh, you're going to have a good year. 2022 is going to be a great year for you. Man, you're lucky. You, you're, you ought to keep playing the odds for you. How many understand that God doesn't work that way? He's not up there rolling dice. Your fate is not some, some obtuse future that no one has any clue. Well, Brother Nanston, how do we know the workings of the Lord? Do we understand that God's work is always according to his word? You and I need to understand that. God's work is always according to his word. You, you see, God is not just working according to his word, but God is bound by his word. And I also want to help us with something as well. Not only is God bound by his word, but you are also bound by God's word. Say, so, Brother Nance, I don't believe God. I'm an atheist. I don't believe that that exists. I don't believe that book is real. I totally deny it. I don't, I don't, I don't go to church. I don't have God in my life. Stop just for a second. Your belief does not indicate God being in your life or not in your life. And I want to just say this, and I want you to hear me when I say this. Whether you're an infidel or whether you're a believer, God is working in your life. You see, because God is bound by his word, you are also bound by his word. And what is happening in your life is a direct reflection of the laws of God being worked in your life. So I climb up on top of this building and I make a statement. I do not believe in gravity. Does not exist. I deny it. I don't think it's true. I think everybody that teaches the law of gravity is a loose cannon. So I'm going to tell you something. Because I don't believe in gravity, listen to me. I am therefore not bound by the law of gravity because I don't believe in it. Is everybody with me on this? I mean, there are clubs, you know, gravity believers. They have to live under the law of gravity because they are gravity believers. But I'm not a gravity believer. So therefore, the laws of gravity do not apply to my life because I don't believe in it. Everybody follow my thinking? So I get a running start off this roof. I start about right here. And you hear my footsteps, tink, 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 as I run all the way to the edge, and I jump off. And as I jump off, I scream out, I defy gravity. Anybody know which way I'm going to go next? 
whether I believe it or not, how many understand that my actions are going to be defied by the laws of gravity? Yes or no? Your life is defined by the laws of this word. And how you live is determining whether you are being scattered, being cursed, or being restored. Is everybody with me on that? Say, Brother Nance, I'll be honest with you. It seems like the last couple of months I've had some horns in my life. Did you really think you would... Did you really think you would jump off the roof and come to a different conclusion? You're not going to jump off the roof and come to a different conclusion. It's just not going to happen. And so notice here in the passage, I want you to turn back to me if you would, turn back with me if you would to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. He says in verse 7, verse 14, or actually, actually let's, let's, let's back up, let's back up. Verse 20, he says this in verse 19, I have set before you and ye shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of, the, out of my land, which I gave them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight and will make it a proverb and a byword among all nations. So he says this, you, if, you, if you turn from me, it's, it's, almost, it's, almost, it's almost like this statement. If it, uh, come, come, come here, come here, Hayden, come here real quick. And here's what I want you to do. <clears throat> I really don't think this is going to hurt at all. I want, I want you to run as hard as you can into that wall. Okay? You do that for me? Okay, and when you hit the wall, I went to the hands behind your back. If he runs into the wall, how many think there's going to be a consequence? <laughs> yeah, how many like to see him? Yeah. <laughs> wow, man, you. Yeah, they, don't like they don't like you, brother. <laughs> No, no, we, we, we look at something like that and we would, I, I know, I'm trying to illustrate something. We would look at that and we would say, well, Ethan, what'd you do? Well, I ran into that wall as hard as I could. What happened? Well, I, I think I broke my nose and chipped my tooth and maybe broke my jaw. Other than that, I'm all right. And we look at it and we're like, duh, did you think there was going to be a different outcome? Is everybody with me? You, you live a certain way, and then and do you not realize that you are bound by laws? And here is the nation of Israel, and it's like, do you not realize you are bound by the law of the living God? And if you are going to forsake the Lord, do you not realize horns are coming into your life? And God's word, no matter if you believe it or not, it is activated in your life and the outcome, whether, whether, whether there are horns, scatterings, whether there's cursings, or whether there's restorations, it, God, is, God cannot change. God must act in every situation of our life. God must act according to his word. He is bound by the word, but here's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Not only is God bound by his word, you are also bound by the word of God. Well, I don't believe it. You'll be in a devil's hell. You know why? Because you're bound by God's word. You are bound, you live under God's word. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. You know, I, 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 was reading, I was reading through the book of, of Kings, and I, I was reminded of just different things that happened. I was reminded of the 42 children who came out and mocked the prophet Elijah. Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. And after he walks away and he curses those children. By the way, those children were simply a reflection of their home. 
God had taken up Elijah in a whirlwind. Here's Elisha who had received the mantle and they had heard that story and they didn't believe that Elijah went up in a whirlwind. And so they're standing, you go up thou, and, 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 and he cursed them because they mocked the work of God and two she bears came out and devoured them. And I read that story and I was thinking to myself, when you mock the things of God, what do you expect the outcome to be? Brother Nance, I don't know why this is happening. God is bound by his word. You are bound by his word. And if you're going to run into that wall and say, I don't believe it exists, what you believe is, what you believe is not going to affect the outcome or the consequences. Your obedience to God's word or your rebellion to God's word is going to determine how God works in your life. You can be seated. Now, now, now notice, notice this and we're, then we're done. Second Chronicles, verse 19. I want you to notice verse 19. Everybody with me in verse 19? But what's the next word? If you turn away. Verse 20, I'll pluck you up. Verse 14. Everybody see verse 14? What's the first word? Ah. God says, I have to work by my word. What determines what happens in your life is how you respond to my word. If you turn away, you're getting plucked up. But if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and what? Forgive their sins and what else? Heal their land. Brethren ants, why were they scattered? Because they turned from the Lord. Why would God come to a place of rubble why would God come to a place of rubble and restore this place and not only restore it but give them great peace and personally be a wall of fire around it why would God come to this place and say I will dwell in the midst of it and this place which is a place of rubble is going to be a place of singing and rejoice. Why would God do that? God is bound by his word. If my people act this way, horns. If my people will act this way, rejoicing and singing. Everybody get it? Here's, here, here's the end. God is bound by his word. He, can't, he cannot operate outside the laws of his word. Is everybody with me on that? I, you, every person in America is also bound by the word of God. There is no one living outside, and I want, you, I want you to hear me, I want you to hear me. There is no one living outside the laws of God's word. What about the prodigal son? How many understand he was living under the laws of God's word? Yes or no? Yeah. Scattering, cursing, Restoration. What's in my life is how I am living under the law of God's word. I'll leave you with the great wisdom of my father. Son, did you think you were going to get a different outcome? Here's what he said. What did you expect to happen? Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the word of God tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the study in Zechariah. And Lord, tonight, I pray that you would help us individually to understand. And Lord, tonight's kind of a foundational message, but help us to understand that all of us live our life under the laws 
of God's word. And the work of God in us is in response to the word of God in our life. So, O oh Lord, may there be restoration. May there be rejoicing and singing in our midst because of our obedience and our love to you. So, Lord, would you help us tonight to grow in your word? And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand tonight. As the piano plays, I just want to invite you to come tonight. God's word can be a place of great blessing and rejoicing. It can also be horns in your life. Would you come tonight as God has spoken and helped you? As he's directed you tonight, would you come and let God work in your heart? Father, we want to tell you that we love you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for meeting with us and for encouraging our hearts. And I pray that you would help us to be blessed. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Uh, just a couple of things. And Brother Tim, if you want to come up and uh, catch any announcements that, that I don't have. But just a couple of announcements I want to give out real quick. Number one, uh, just a reminder uh, well, I, I want to mention this. This is Brother Brad's last Sunday, and uh, you're, he's going to be uh, taking off back to Heartland and uh, appreciate him this summer. He's been doing an internship at the church and appreciate his uh, just his faithfulness and work here and uh, being a blessing. And uh, we're going to be uh, missing him. But Brad, just want to say publicly thank you for all that you've done to be a help here at Southside. Also, wanted to mention a couple of things that are happening uh, this week. On Thursday is the ladies' meeting, and uh, I want to encourage all of our ladies to be there. Really work hard to be there, and uh, two reasons you ought to be there, and this will kind of flow over into the men's thing. But come, if you'll come, I believe God will bless you. But number two, come and make a friend. Uh, come and encourage somebody. Uh, many times uh, the Christian life can be lonely and and sometimes people are looking for a friend, and you say, well, Brother Nance, I really am good, and I don't need events like this, but somebody else does, and this is going to be an opportunity for you to come and be a blessing to somebody else, and so that'll be uh, Thursday, 6.30, and then on Saturday is our Iron Men uh, meeting. Now, we do this four times a year, and uh, this is kind of our August meeting, and then we'll have another one later on this year, but it's not something we do every week or even every month, but if you'll come, be there at 8 a.m. It's going to be in the Family Life Center. Uh, there's no charge for the ladies' meeting or the men's meeting, but if you'll come, the men's meeting is a little bit more in depth than the ladies' meeting. We have uh, kind of a workbook that we go through. We have a big breakfast that we'll have and uh, just some sessions that will help you be a godly man. And so if you've ever been to one before, you know kind of the format and it's an encouraging time. But I want to encourage both our ladies and our men to maybe look around the room tonight and maybe somebody that's not here 
and call somebody or text somebody and just say, hey, I just want to encourage you. I'd love to see you at the Ironman meeting or the ladies thing. You say, but I, I, I don't like to do that. Somebody is on the fence. How many believe when I say that somebody's on the fence, they're wanting to come and uh, they don't know if they're going to have a good time, if they'll have to sit by themselves, if nobody's going to talk to them. You just know how the, all of that goes and Satan can just have a heyday with that. But just reach out this week and encourage somebody and I guarantee you it'll be a great blessing with that. Also want to mention this, that on the 15th, Sunday night on the 15th, uh, we'll be having the Lord's Supper here at Southside Baptist Church. And so just want to remind uh, our church family about that on Sunday night. We'll be having the Lord's Supper. And so this week, just kind of be thinking about that and preparing your heart for the, the Lord's Supper. We do practice at Southside a closed communion. Um, you say, Brendan, what is that? Well, we, we feel like the Lord's Supper is a local church ordinance. And so we believe it's for God's uh, church. And so if you're a member of that, of the church, uh, we invite you to partake. Uh, but we just ask that only those that are members partake of the Lord's Supper. So you're invited to the service, but just uh, partaking of that, we ask that members uh, only partake of the Lord's Supper. So that'll be next Sunday night, just a reminder of that. Brother Tim, come and you can give us uh, any announcements that we have. And also, I want to just say this, if you're watching live stream, sometimes people are uh, kind of hesitant or maybe they're tithing here and there or whatever, uh, especially with not passing the plate. Sometimes people cannot, uh, can, can, can lack a little bit of faithfulness on that because they don't come and go. But I want to encourage you to be faithful. And I appreciate so many of you that have been faithful to giving and tithing and things like that. And uh, through the summer, we have a lot of operation. How many understands that? And uh, this week, we're replacing uh, three AC units. Um, they're not cheap, especially when you got three to replace. That's about uh, about $15,000. And so uh, uh, people often ask, Brother Nance, where's the money go? It goes to upkeep, operation, paying bills, keeping lights on, and it goes to the work of God, which is very important. And tithing is a great way for you to be a part of the ministry. Amen. It's a part of that and just recognizing it. So I just want to encourage you, be faithful in your tithes and offerings. Amen. Uh, just a couple quick other announcements. Right after the prayer time, which I believe uh, Brother Ed's going to be closing in prayer for us, uh, the teens are going to have their afterglow, and they'll be meeting in the Family Life Center. Is that correct? Okay, they'll be meeting over there in the Family Life Center, and so teenagers be aware of that. And then the teen activity will be on the uh, August 28th. And that is Invent It from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. And so if you have any questions, see Brother Josh or Miss Lindsay, and they'll help you out with that. And last announcement, men, swing around to the welcome desk for preaching and prize sign-up. We need some preachers to sign up, and uh, we'll hunt you down. I don't want to have to start asking all these ladies around here to start. No, I'm kidding. But uh, we do want the men to sign up and be a blessing. And every single time, it's always a blessing to have the men come and preach. And so I'm looking forward to that. So please sign up for that. And uh, whoever else wants to sign up to bring a pie, please do that as well. Well, and uh, that will be a blessing. With those announcements, Brother Ed, come closest in a prayer and pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this place you've given us, Lord, and we just pray that we're, we're the light that you have lit here. Oh, Lord, let me, let me rephrase that. We know that we, we're the light that you have lit here, and we pray that we carry that light through every way, every way we can throughout the community that we live, and especially to our families and to our loved ones and to our neighbors and everyone, Lord. May you bless this offering that we give, that we give back to you so that we can continue the hard work of seeing souls saved. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.